Now what we need to do is that when we swing our pickaxe, if our Area 2D comes into contact with our resource nodes, such as the rock, then we want to actually harvest materials from the rock. So on our Hand Equip node, we're going to want to create a new script that uses the Area 2D and detects resource nodes when it comes into contact with them. So let's take the Hand Equip node 2D. I'll click the Add Script button. And let's create that in character slash hand equip.gd. Okay, so inside of here on ready, we're going to want to get access to our area 2D. So at on ready var, let's call this variable something like equip hitbox, which is of course going to be a type of area 2D. And we'll look for dollar sign area 2D to find the area 2D under this script as a node we can use. Okay, so in our hand equip script, I'm going to get rid of all this boilerplate code, except the extends node 2D part. I'm going to click on area 2D here. Let's go to the node tab, which is next to inspector in the top right. And we want to choose body entered here. So when a physics body enters the area, we'll check if it's a resource node type. And if so, we'll run the harvest function on the resource node and get some materials out of it. So let's double click on body entered here. And we're going to connect it to the hand equip script. So we should see this new function come up here when you hit connect and you can click on area 2D and see where we have the signals connected to. And you can double click to actually jump to the function inside of the script if you ever need to. So uh, we're going to check if the type of body that entered was a resource node. So let's go over to the resource node scene and we want to attach a new script to this resource node. So I'm going to click on the add button for a new script. I'll call this script resource node.gd because we'll use it for other types of nodes, not just the rock. So let's create that. And we'll give it a class name so that we can reference it by its class name. So class name is going to be resource node. We'll get rid of this extra code down here. And just to give it something, let's give it a export var and let's call it a starting resources as a integer. And we could default this to something like, uh, let's just say one. So by default, a resource node will have one resource. And later, when we run out of resources, we'll remove the node from the scene. So if we click on resource node here and go to inspector, we can see our starting resources value. So to go along with the starting resources, we'll have another variable, uh, current resources, which is also going to be of type int. And when our script starts, so function ready, we'll take current resources and set that equal to starting resources. So basically, when we add a resource node to the scene, whether that's when the level loads or any other time we instantiate it, we're going to start off its resource count with the starting resources for this node. Okay, so we'll come back to this script and add more stuff to it later. Let's go to the player node and jump into the hand equip script. So inside of this on area 2D body entered, we want to check if the body is of type resource node. So we can check here if body is resource node. And we can do this by specifying the class name because we actually created the class name in the script. So resource node is something we can reference. And if the body is of type resource node, then we want to harvest from the resource. So when anybody enters our hand equip area 2D for colliding with resource nodes, we want to check if the body is of type resource node. So we can do that by doing if body is resource node. So if the body is a resource node, then we can call any functions from the resource node class on it. So we can do, let's say, body dot harvest, and then we'll give it a harvest amount. So when the item equipped to our hand comes into contact with a resource node, we want to check if the tool is capable of actually harvesting from that resource node. So in order to do that, we also need to know what kind of tool or weapon or whatever we have in the hand is actually equipped to our character's hand. So let's add a export var up here and we could say equipped item. So what we're going to do with these equipped item resources is that when we're in game, we're going to change it to whatever the texture of the tool we currently have equipped to the hand is. So whenever we change the equipped item up here, basically we're updating it across our game and then we'll be able to use the right tool to harvest the right nodes. Now, I also thought about it for a while and we can go a step further than this by also making it so that some of that code will run in the editor. So when we change the equipped item in the editor, we can also update the texture immediately. Um, but in order to do that, we would actually have to have the script attached to the equip sprite node. But 
looking through our animations, all of the properties that we're changing are already on that equip sprite texture. So if we look through here, there's actually no real need for the hand equip node, at least currently. So we can actually just move the script to the equip sprite node, make it extend from a sprite 2D, and then we'll be able to write that code that can update the texture inside of the editor as well. So that will just be one way we can actually make it a little bit better. So what I'm going to do here is take the equip sprite node and just move it outside of the hand equip node. But I'm going to have the animation window open here so that I can just watch and make sure that moving things around doesn't destroy uh, the animation setup here. I think in the past it might have caused some problems, but now let's go ahead and move Equip Sprite up here. And you'll see that Equip Sprite still shows up there, even though we moved everything up. So it's not at the same position, but it's still being referenced by name. So if we hit play here, our animation still works completely. You can see that uh, the hand equip node, we didn't really need it for anything. So let's take this script, uh, the hand equip, and I'm going to, uh, let's move it to the equip sprite. So you can just drag and drop from the code editor right here, and drop it in there. And then let's just rename this equip sprite to be hand equip. Uh, first, I'm gonna delete the hand equip node. So let's get rid of that. And then up here, I'm going to rename this to be hand equip. Once again, having the animation window open to make sure that it handles the renaming of things there. So once again, in the past, like Godot 3, I think that uh, when you rename stuff like that, it would actually break your animations. But now it seems to handle things really nicely and keep up with the new naming of the uh, nodes. So that's super nice. So what we want to be able to do now with our hand equip node is to be able to set our resource here. So right now we can drop any resource into this node, but that's not what we want. We want to create a custom resource, which is a different type of script than a node script, um, because it is not going to attach to a node in your scene. It's actually going to be uh, kind of a class you can create objects from, and those objects sit inside of your project rather than inside of your uh, scenes as an attached script. So you can almost think of it as a scene you can instantiate, except instead of that, it's just a, instead of, except instead of a scene, it's just a data object. So I have an items folder created in my project. I'm not sure if I created that earlier on screen or not, um, but create a folder for items. And then we can right click into here and do a new script. And we're gonna inherit from resource this time. And what we'll say here is equipable item dot gd so let's create that and double click on the script so we extend resource here you can think of this more as a data object uh, rather than a script which enhances what a node can do so it's not going to have the process functions or anything like that if you're used to unity it's very similar to a scriptable object um, so for our resource here i want to give it a class name so we can be very specific about what kind of item can be equipped to the hand so let's give it class name equipable item so anything that is equipable whether that's a tool or a weapon will inherit from this okay and then we can give it some data fields so i'm going to do at export var and let's start with uh, texture of the uh, equipped item and this is going to be a texture 2d okay and maybe we also want a display name so i'll do at export var display name and that'll be a string so the reason you might have a display name variable is that how it actually shows up in game, how you want the text to show whenever you reference the item could be different than how you have the name of the resource saved into your project. You might have like underscores here, but that would look ugly in game. So having a custom string field for that can be a little helpful. Okay, so now I'll just save that file. And now if we right click on the items folder, we can go to new resource and look for the type we just created, equipable item. So it extends resource, it's equipable item from the equipable item.gd script. So double click on that to create it. And you'll see that this new resource saves as a .tres file. So it's kind of similar to saving a node scene into your project. So you can use it across your game, except instead of instancing it, you're just referencing this store of data. So let's give it a name. Uh, we can just give it test item for right now. Our actual tools are going to have another class that will build on top of a grippable item and have some extra stuff attached to it. But let's just create a test item for now. Hit save. Okay, so if we double click on the test item.tres, you can see in the inspector our display name and texture for this resource. So for the display name, I'll just say test item. And for the texture, um, well, first let's look at 2D view. Let's use something different than the pickaxe that's here standard. 
I'll go to tools and let's use the hammer dot PNG. So hammer copper dot PNG, just drag that into the texture slot. Okay, so now you can kind of see how this is setting up. We're giving details about what an item in our game actually is. And then whenever we need to equip it, we have these data fields we can use. So let's save everything and click on hand equip. And we could actually drag this equipped item in right now. So if we go down to items, you can see we can drag test item dot TRES into this field. And when we do that, nothing's actually going to happen because um, right now our script is not set up to do anything with it. It's just a equipped item. And right now it's still set to resource. So we could have used any resource. The equipable item is a type of resource, but there are other resource objects. Let's be specific now and change this to equipable item. So now by specifying that class name, only an equipable item can fit this field. So other types of resources don't qualify. And that is handy for managing things to make sure we have the right items actually equipped to the fields that allow them. Um, now we can reset this field and drag it in again to show that we can still set that there. Um, I guess we could do another test. I, I'll right click here, do new new resource and just do a normal resource here. So let's create that. I'll just save that. And then let's see if we can drag that into the field. We shouldn't be able to. So I'll drag new resource .tres into here and you can see it doesn't qualify anymore. So it keeps the resources that don't qualify out. Okay, let's uh, delete that new resource. We'll never need that. And now we want to make it so that when we set a new equipped item, we actually update our texture on our Sprite 2D node, which is the hand equip node now. So if we go to the end of this export line and add a colon, then we can add setter and getter functions to this property field. So we want a set. And when we do a set function, we're going to need the new equipped item as a parameter. So new um, or next item. So as the parameter, I'll type in, let's say next equipped. Okay, give it a colon, new line, and now we can actually write the code. So when we set a new equipped item, what do we want to happen? The first obvious thing is that we want to take the equipped item field and set that to the next equipped. So the next equipped is the, uh, so the next equipped is the new item coming in, and the equipped item is the field that is set in our script. And then the equipped item is the field set in our script. So after we change the equipped item, this field in here, we want to update the texture as well. So we're going to take the texture. And remember, this is a Sprite 2D node now. Oh, well, it should be a Sprite 2D node, but we haven't changed the extend up here. So change this to Sprite 2D. Okay. And now there should be a texture field. If you want to see all the fields that are attached, you could write it like this self dot, let's say texture, and then it'll automatically know where we're dealing with a Sprite 2D node. So we should be able to access this texture. Uh, property. So let's do self dot texture. And then we'll set that equal to uh, we could do the equipped item, or the next equipped, I'm going to do the equipped item, because this will also verify that we've set it properly. So equipped item dot texture. So that's a field that we set up in our resource script, the equipped item. So just grabbing this field here. And then we're going to set that to the texture. So this part will actually already work in game. If we go to 2d view, you can see in the editor, we have this pickaxe, but if we hit play, well, the setter function is going to get called. So we switch to the hammer already. And you can see, because uh, of the way we set up the animations, it still works with this tool. Um, because we're just changing the position, scale, and rotation on the node. So it's going to basically work with any tool we equip. It's going to function the same way for those animations. Now, how do we get it to work in the editor? Well, if we go up to the top, we can write this annotation at tool, which means that your code is going to run uh, in the editor as well as in the game. Now, uh, you can specify, as we'll do later on, uh, that certain code will only work in the in-game. And you can also specify if code will work in the editor. But by default, if you have this at tool, it's going to run in both. So for the tool scripts to work, uh, what you need to do is close the scene and then reopen it. So let's go ahead and reopen the player.tscn scene. And you'll see that now, the uh, tool has been updated to the hammer texture from our test item. So that basically means that whenever our script loads, the set function is going to be called and whatever item we have equipped, we're going to grab the texture from it. So this works both in game and in the editor. So if we go hit play, well, you can see, of course, that we have that tool uh, equipped before. Now, 
that is now set in the editor by default, but uh, you can see before we added the at tool that that was working. So, yep, we don't need to do anything like on ready to set this. Now, something I do uh, want to kind of test for myself here is uh, if we can have this tool script go ahead and let's say update another sprite. So I'm going to add a sprite 2D node as a test and let's uh, put it under hand equip. And then I'm just going to get that as a on ready var or you know, I guess let's make it a at export var. So at export var sprite 2D, which is a type of sprite 2D. And uh, this will be equal to, well, no, we're going to set that in the editor, sorry. OK, so at export for sprite 2D, we'll assign that to the sprite 2D node here. And what I want to do is take the sprite 2D dot texture and also set that to the next equipped dot texture. So let's see if this will run in the editor. Um, I'm going to grab this node, hit W to move it out, and let's come out here. So I'll save the node and uh, let's close the player.tscn. Yep, save and close and then reopen it. And let's see. Invalid set index texture on base nil. So did we set the sprite 2D node? Yeah, we did. Yeah, so I thought it might actually work like that, uh, where you can't really access other nodes. They do specify in the documentation right here. This bit code from other nodes doesn't run in the editor. Your access to other nodes is limited. So uh, basically, if you want to add tool script to work, then seems like you're going to need to attach that to the node where you're actually changing the texture files. So that's that's why I changed it earlier by removing the node 2D and then just moving the script into the sprite node. OK, worth testing. So let's get rid of that and this bit right here and just get back to what we had before. But what's important is that our equipped item thing is actually working here. So anything else we need to set up whenever we change the equipped item, we'll just add to this set of function. So for instance, in our equipped item, if we're like setting the attack damage, then we do something like attack damage equals whatever is in the equipped item dot attack damage. And uh, that's how we'll keep our scripts updated with whatever item we have equipped.